Good morning, North Star Online family. God, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Springtime is here and we love it. If I've never met you before, my name is Mike and it's an honor that you took time out of your schedule to join our online family. We're so excited about what God's up to. You know, it's Palm Sunday, the day that we celebrate Christ began really that last week's journey to the cross. Very significant week in his life. I'm praying that today will be a significant day in your life. We begin a brand new series today called Rescue. Rescue is all about the lengths that Jesus went to to come and find you and to come and find me. Well, I don't know where you're joining from. You could be anywhere in the United States or anywhere in another part of the world. My prayer is today that you're not watching alone, but also my prayer is today that wherever you are, that God speaks directly to you. Well, I can't wait for you to join in to our live family here in the Kennesaw Ackworth campus. We're so excited about what's in store for you today. So if you're going to take notes for the sermon, the best way to do that is to download the North Star Church app, North Star Church Georgia in the app store. And you can download that, all the sermon notes there and all the other things that will be talked about today on our stage will be there. So get ready. We're going to have a great time together. I'll see you again in a few. Star. We know it's yucky outside, but thank you guys for being here. Would you guys stand with us on this Palm Sunday and we're going to worship together. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah.
evening. We're so glad that you are here with us today. Listen, I know that it is nasty outside, uh, but we are so glad that you are here with us worshiping today. What a great song to start with as it talks about just singing in the middle of the storm. And if you've walked in here today and maybe you're feeling like there's a storm going on in your life, and today's going to be a great, great day. And um, as we continue to worship this morning, we'd love to introduce this new song to you. And I love the second verse of this song that talks about that even in our sin, even as we curse the name of Jesus, he still made that choice to willingly sacrifice his life for us. And um, today as we celebrate Palm Sunday and as we move this week in Holy Week into Easter next week, what a great song. So Nick's going to lead us. And, and as we sing this morning, I'd love for you to join us. Thank you. 
You are a treasure. And God, today we come as your children and we lay everything we have at the altar. God, all our hopes, all our dreams, all our hurts, all our heartaches, all our expectations, God, we ask today that you reveal yourself to us. We want to know you better when we leave than when we came in. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Will you give the Lord another hand? Man, what a great time of worship. I love looking around and seeing you guys worship. Hey, why don't you take a second, turn around, high five, fist bump someone and say, I hope you brought your umbrella. And go on and grab a seat. Well, man, it is great to be with you guys today. If we've never met, my name's Daniel, and I'm one of the pastors here at North Star. And if you've been coming here for any amount of time, you could probably say this with me. Our mission is to help people find their way home. And that's, that's a, a church home. That's a home in heaven. And we pray that God will show you exactly who He wants you to be and you can become everything He wants you to be. And that's our prayer. And man, it's such a joy to be here. If this is your first time with us, we want to welcome you, whether you're in the room or whether you're, you're worshiping with us online. And hopefully you got a worship guide when you came in. Just take that and tear off the portion on the end. If you could just give us your information. And if there's anything we could pray for you about, we take that really seriously. We pray over all those here each week. And so it's so great for you guys to be here. I want to invite our hospitality team to come forward. You know, this week we had uh, something pretty cool happen in this room. You guys hear how we do, we do mission trips to Haiti and Guatemala. Well, this week we had the opportunity to appreciate all those people who've gone on those trips, all those people who give to make that happen. And, and, and I tell you, it's because of your giving and it's what you do here at North Star that that happens. It's because of you. And we have a school in Haiti, we have a church in Haiti, we've got a children's home in Haiti, and guys, that wouldn't exist without your giving. So thank you so much uh, for doing that and entrusting us to help change people's lives with that. You guys can pass the baskets now. Well, it's gonna be a busy week coming up, the most important week in the life of a Christian and the life of our church. And it, and it all starts today, but Friday we've got a ton going on. We have our family experience, which is full and overflowing, but we also have at 12 noon something pretty cool. We haven't had this in years, and we, we felt like this would be something that would be really meaningful for us. We have a Good Friday service, and it's at 12 noon. So maybe if you can grab a lunch break and come over. Kids, they'll let you out of school if you ask. And come over at 12 noon. It's only going to be about 50 minutes. And it's going to be in the chapel in our True North building. It's going to be some time where we'll, we'll take communion together. We'll worship together. And it's going to be a reflective service of what Christ did for us that hour 2,000 years ago on that cross. And then the next day, Saturday kicks off all of our Easter services. So we have six services going on Saturday and Sunday. I won't bore you with all those times. That's in your worship guide. It's on the app. You can see it on the website there. But what we're asking, we're asking two things. If you're North Star Core, and if you're here today in the rain, you are a core, <laughs> North Star Core. We appreciate it. We want to ask two things from you. One, we want to ask that you come to a service on Saturday or come to the early services on Sunday morning. And what that'll do is it'll free up seats at the 9.30 and 11 for those people who maybe don't have a church home that's gonna worship with us next Sunday morning. So that's the first thing. The second thing is this, and most importantly, invite. Invite someone, invite multiple people. And we've given you some tools to make that really easy. Out in the hallway, on the boards, the pegboards, we have, and then at the information desk, you can pick them up, we have these little carabiners. And on each carabiner is five little invite cards. So word is, all the cool kids are taking the carabiners and attached it to their belt loop. I've seen Nick do it, all the cool kids are doing it. And then you can just whip it out really quick, you know, when someone comes your way. But just invite them, invite them to church. Sometimes it's all it takes is a simple invite. And my little girl, she invited a girl to church and the girl welled up with tears. A little, little eight-year-old, nine-year-old, and she said, I've never had anybody invite me to church before. You never know 
what a simple invite can do. So grab that. And then also you'll notice some circles in the hallway on the floor. Those are photo spots. So what you do is you put your, you put your feet in the little, the little places there, take a picture of it, post it to your social, uh, text one of your friends, invite them, tell them you, you want them to be here with you, save them a seat, have them come with you. Sometimes it's all it can take. Guys, if our friends and coworkers are gonna find their way home, you're gonna have to show them. You're gonna have to give them the address and bring them. And, uh, and we want them here. Well, it's going to be a great day today. Mike's going to kick off a three-week series called Rescue. And so grab your Bible, grab your pen, grab your, your app, whatever you need. And let's dig in and let's see what God has for us this morning. It's going to be a great one. First of 33 miners were removed from the dark dungeon that they had been living in for, at that point, 68 days. Today, the 69th day, the operation still underway. Incredible rescue caught on camera. A teenager lost at sea for 49 days with no food, no water, and no way to see. Cheers erupted when three people trapped inside an abandoned mine in West Virginia were rescued last night. They had been trapped since Saturday. A uh, backcountry skier is recovering today after being rescued in rugged terrain west of Lake Tahoe. Authorities say the man fell some 200 to 300 feet from the rocks along the north side of the mountain. Anastasia and her three-year-old friend Trent had been playing in the backyard. All of a the sudden, they vanished. Carr said she got some neighbors together to search for them with no luck. That's when they called police. The boys have been found alive, all 12 boys and uh, the coach. But at the moment, they're too weak to move. We do have breaking news at this hour of the best possible variety to bring to you. All 12 boys, every child from that soccer team has been rescued from that flooded cave in Thailand after 18 days. You know, you're probably like me. You've watched the stories. You've been riveted to the television something happens you see the alert you see the news you follow it on twitter or, or facebook you see it and you sit and watch those videos and they rivet you because for many of you it's children you're a parent and you're watching it going i can't imagine if that was my child that had wandered away from home i can't imagine if that was my family member trapped down in that cave or trapped there in that tunnel and they can't find their way out and you are praying may god send somebody to get them out because your heart goes out to them you see it through the eyes of someone that's watching a loved one suffer. I cannot imagine, we, we've had this conversation before, I cannot imagine what it would be like to have a child that was missing. I, I just can't imagine it. And the links you would want people to go to to help them find their way back. But that's just one part of the rescue story. The other part of the rescue story is the one that's trapped, the one that's lost, the one that's missing praying that somebody would come find them for those miners for those soccer players last year that went down miles and miles and miles into the earth on just a normal little trip that get trapped down there and they're losing oxygen i can't imagine being one of them hoping hoping somebody's going to come find them somebody's going to get them to safety somebody's going to remember that they're there and they are going to come and seek them out you have the watcher the one whose heart goes out you have the one who is in the predicament and then you have the rescuer we, we know this that every rescuer leaves a place of comfort to come and go and find someone that's not safe in fact Many times, they risk their lives to bring someone else out safely. And sometimes, they give up their life to make sure that someone else can find their way out. They always will talk on the news reports about, you know, the, the chances of danger happening, that they could get trapped on the little, the little uh, thing that they created to get them down, to get these soccer players out they weren't the ones that were lost. They had already found their way to safety. They were the ones going back in. All of those are the picture of a rescue situation. Hopeless situation, very few opportunities for recover, and someone that's willing to dive in when the situation called for it. We've watched them. You've watched them. I've watched them. But 2,000 years ago, the greatest rescue of all time took place. 
It was the rescue that has changed everything for the past 2,000 years. It was a rescue mission of people that didn't even know that they were hopeless and didn't even know that they were lost. And there was one who left utter safety and security to come and find them and help them find their way home. And that's the story we're going to talk about today. Luke chapter 19. If you got your Bibles, go ahead and turn there this morning. Luke chapter 19. We're going to start reading down in verse number 28. If you've got your phone and it did not get waterlogged on the way in, you can go ahead and pull up your North Star Church app. You can go to North Star Church, Georgia, uh, North Star Kennesaw, and you can find that. And you can have that app out as we work along this morning. All right, let's talk about the greatest rescue of all time that happened. The greatest rescue when we planned this series. We had no idea that it was us in this building that might need rescued later. All right, and so we didn't even know. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? All right, and you're going, Mike, do y'all have a plan? We have a plan, and if something happens today, if you see me leave running out the back door, head for safety, all right? And so, but anyways, we, we got it all taken care of. All is good, all is good. We're, we're all good, I think. All right, here we go. Luke chapter 19. Let's start reading the story. So let me, let me paint the picture. Guys, go ahead and bring the house up a little bit so everybody can read and see. Let, let me uh, paint the picture of what was going on. It was the Passover. Every good Jew celebrated the Passover. And at the Passover, you celebrated that thousands of years prior that when the death angel came, the death angel had passed over because they put the blood of a spotless lamb on their door and they had passed over there in Egypt, those children that had been in slavery. Well, they've been celebrating this and now this festival is happening, this Passover is happening, and most scholars estimate over a million Jews were making their way into Jerusalem. Let me, let me tell you the state of the people. They were sick and tired of Roman oppression. For 1,500 years, they had been under some type of oppression, and they were tired of it. They hated the Romans. The Romans hated the Jews. That was, the, that was sort of the world that these people were living in. They were looking for somebody to come and rescue them. They were looking for somebody to come overthrow the Roman Empire, establish military dominance, and save the children of Israel. That's what the people were like. Now, have you ever been in a crowd that the energy of the crowd, I would say, is teeming, meaning it won't take much to send them over the edge? If you've ever heard the word revolution, that's what we're talking about. So the the Jewish leaders are terrified because they don't see a Messiah on the horizon. The Romans are terrified because all they can think is this Jewish people can outnumber them and outman them. And the Jewish people are going, we're looking for somebody. And in comes Jesus. Jesus at this point in the story, everybody look at me, at this point in the story has become a pretty mythical figure. He had just raised Lazarus from the dead. So today there's obituaries that are published in papers. If you had read someone's obituary and you bumped into them at Kroger, it would get your attention, all right? And so the word has gotten out on Jesus, the word. And so people are going, man, maybe this guy, maybe he's the one. They've heard about all the stuff. The disciples do not want him to go to Jerusalem. They do not want him because they know that the religious leaders are going to try to kill him. And this all, all these little factoids are happening. Let's pick up the story. Luke chapter 19. We'll start reading in verse 28. Now, I will just tell you before you start reading, I'm going to stop and talk a lot. So if at any point you're reading along going, what's he talking about? Just look up and we'll dive back in. Here we go. Luke 19 verse 28. And when he had said these things to his disciples, he went on ahead, going up to where? Where was he going to? Jerusalem. And he was going up with millions of people. And the disciples did not like this at all. 
when he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples saying this, go into the village in front of you where on entering you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it, bring it here. If anyone asks you why you're untying it, you shall say, who has need of it? What was the phrase? Who has need of it? What does it say? Oh, help me out. What does it say? Who has need of it? The Lord. Now, here's the interesting part about that. The interesting part about that is Jesus had kept this part of who he was somewhat publicly undercover. You remember, he would do a miracle, then he would go, don't tell anybody what I just did. Remember, because he knew the time wasn't ready. The people weren't ready. He would do something, and he would tell his disciples that he was the Son of God, but don't go out and proclaim this yet. They're not ready to hear it. Well, they're ready to hear it now. You tell them that the Lord has need of it. Now, this is interesting because back then, you didn't go online and make advance reser reservations for donkeys, all right? And so, hey, you haul you got any donkeys available there at Beth in uh, Jerusalem? You didn't do that. Well, how in the world did they know? Well, he's the Lord. And he said, there's going to be a donkey. There's going to be a colt. He's never been sat on, and I need it. So you guys need to go and bring it back to me. Well, why, why Mike? Why, why would he do that? Well, he knew that over in the Old Testament, Jesus knew this better than anybody. Over in the Old Testament, there's a prophecy, and the prophecy said that the Messiah is going to come riding in on the back of a colt, on the back of a donkey, and he's going to ride in. And when you see him riding in, you will know that it is he. And the minute Jesus shows up here in just a second, every Jewish person who thought that hope was coming is now assured hope is coming because there is someone riding in on the back. Now, the interesting part about this is if you were a warrior, you would ride in on a horse. You never rode in on a colt or rode in on a donkey, right? I mean, you wouldn't ride in, you know, I'm not riding in to a gang fight downtown in a Prius, all right? And so, I mean, you, you, the, the, so we're riding in on the back, that's not anywhere in your Bible, all right? And so, but 930 didn't even get to hear that. But anyway, so, Here's Jesus showing up on the back of a donkey, which meant whenever you rode in on that, you were coming in for peace, and you were coming in as one of the people. That's what the picture was. So he tells them, there's going to be a donkey. It's going to be a colt. It's going to be tied up. I want you to bring it to me. Let's pick up the story. Well, the conversation goes exactly as you thought. So those that were sent away and they found it, just as he told them, you know, the disciples are going, holy smokes, how did he know this would be here? And as they were untying the colt, its owners, as rightfully they should, said to them, why are you untying a colt that you don't own? And they said, the Lord has need of it. Well, I guess that was what they needed to hear. And they brought the colt to Jesus and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on the colt. Now, time out before we dive in. Listen, it's raining so hard, you're going to be here the next hour. So y'all just hang on tight. All right, listen, listen up good. So two things significant about this. One significance, Jesus has never ridden ever. The only time in all the Gospels is mentioned that Jesus rode in. The second thing is he rode in and he knew what was going to come at the end of this journey. What they acted like on this day was going to be totally opposite on Friday. Now, there's some debate on which day this was, but there's no debate that he rode in that day. And there's no debate he knew what he was doing. And he rode in on the back of this colt, and he came as a conquering Messiah. Everybody look at me but it wasn't what they thought. And they're going to come to find this out. It wasn't like they thought it was going to be. A little Bible quiz. I'm going to check a little check up here real quick. Pop quiz. Who were the Jews hoping Jesus was coming to overthrow? Does anybody remember? The Romans. That wasn't going to be the story. Let's keep reading the story. 
As he was drawing near already up on the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. And when he drew near and he saw the city, or if you underline in your Bible, you underline in your notes, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace, but now they're hidden from your eyes. Would you pray with me? I want you to pray a really simple prayer this morning. Whether you've been to church every Sunday for the last 30 years or you've not been to church in 30 years, here's what I want you to pray. I want you to pray, Jesus, help me get it. Would you? Just pray that. Jesus, help me get it. Help me get the story. Help me get the why. Father, help us get it. Jesus, help us get it. If we get it today, it was worth getting out in the rain for. If we get it today, it was worth getting soaking wet. If we get it today, it was worth taking this time to be here when we could have been a lot of other places, could have been home watching the Masters. If we get it, it could change our eternity. Speak to us, show us, teach us grow us. Father, that is my prayer, and I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, growing up, this week may have been called lots of things. It may have been called Holy Week. That may have been what you heard growing up. It may have been called, you may refer to today, Palm Sunday, or the triumphal entry. Next Sunday is Easter. It's pretty much celebrated all across the world as Easter. This is a big week. How many of you remember growing up and on Easter weekend, coming up next weekend, you remember, one of the things you remember is you dressed up on Sunday. Raise your hand if you remember dressing up. In fact, at my house, at the Lynch house down in Fayetteville, we never got new stuff. All right, we got hand-me-downs. I don't know if y'all heard, heard of hand-me-downs. Hand-me-downs are when your cousin wore them and you thought they were yours and you saw in a picture, he had them on and went, Mama, why does Greg have on my clothes? And she made up some lie about how we had the same clothes. It was a lie. I was wearing his clothes, all right? And so, but not on Easter. On Easter, we got something new. But if that's all Easter is, really not the story of Easter. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have Easter Sunday if you don't have what we're reading today, and if you don't know the why, the what Jesus did will never make any sense. You gotta know why he did it. So here's his why. Everybody look at me, make it real simple. Jesus told us his mission. He said, I'm a rescuer. I have come to seek and to save those that were lost, period. Yes or no question. Did he know this mission would cost him his life? Yes or no? Did he willingly do it in spite of that answer? Yes or no? Yes. In fact, there's one, there's one passage that said this. He set his face like flint towards Jerusalem. He knew what was coming. He knew when he got on back of that coal, push play on the end of the story. That's what he knew. He knew the minute they set him up to ride, he's never ridden. The minute they set him on the corner of that coal and he began to ride in, he knew what it was going to cost. But here's what every rescuer will tell you. The mission is worth the cost. I came here to rescue. Here's lessons we learned. Ready? Pen, pencil, something to write with, thumbs to type with. I want you to write down a couple thoughts this morning.
Lesson number one we learn from this is Jesus is heartbroken over those who still need to be rescued. Verse 41 is an interesting verse. And when he drew near and he saw the city. Now understand when he saw the city, there were million, million plus more than are normally there because of the Passover. And when he saw the city, he, what's the word? Help me out again. What's the word? Wept. We always thought the only time Jesus cried was at the tomb of Lazarus. No, 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 no. He cried again. He wept over the city, meaning this. He cried profusely. He cried out. This wasn't a silent, you're looking there and there's a tear running down your cheek. Not that cry. When we were growing up, there used to be a a a Coca-Cola commercial where a, a Native American would drive up on a hill and look out and see all the stuff, and there was a tear that came out of their eye. That's not the picture of this. This is the picture of someone who has lost something valuable weeping. Have you ever cried from a place inside of you that you didn't know you had? You lost somebody that you loved and you cry from a pit? That was the pit he cried from. Why? Because the people he was looking at didn't know why he was coming. They were going to celebrate him, but he wasn't going to deliver their expectations. I want you to write down the word expectations, would you? Here was their expectation, the people. They wanted him to rule. They wanted him to reign. They wanted him to bring the thunder on the Romans. They wanted out from under the oppression of the religious leaders. They wanted a new Messiah. That's what the people wanted. And he was not going to deliver them what they wanted. And they were going to crucify him because what he came to do was not what they needed. Now, here's the deal. Could he have? Yes, he could have. But let's think about this. Everybody look at me real quick. What if Jesus had set up a military rule and freed them from their oppression, but yet they still died with their sin? Would anybody have won? They would have won the next 20 years of their life that were better, but their eternity would be lost. He wept because he came to save them and rescue them and look at me, and they didn't know they needed rescue. And they were going to miss it. He was heartbroken. You know what I think he would think of if he walked in Kennesaw, Ackworth, Paulding today? I think he would weep. I think he'd walk down the hallways of our high schools and he would weep over those that don't know. I think he would walk down the cul-de-sacs of our subdivisions and weep over those. They don't, he doesn't weep because they don't go to church. He would weep because they don't know why he came. He was heartbroken over those that were lost and didn't even know that they needed rescued. And he drew to the city, and he saw the city, and he wept over it. Now, one of our goals as a Christ follower, if you know Jesus, is to look like Jesus which begs the question, if I am not broken over those who do not know, why not? Why do I not? He was broken. Principle number two, Jesus is still the only way to peace with God. He's still the only way. See, if he had set up an earthly rule that had been great for the Jews, it wouldn't have done us any good. But we're the same today. We need God to answer this prayer, that prayer, the other prayer. I need this job. I need that neighborhood. I need this, my child to get in this college. I need, you know, all these kind of things, right? We see it all the time. 
But yet what we need, I want you to write this down under number two, what we need is a Savior. We just don't understand sometimes what we need. We need peace with God. This life makes sense when you find peace with God, but until then, this life will not make sense. It just won't. Listen, I, I have a lot of prayers I prayed that God did not answer, that I'm thankful he did not answer. How many of you used to pray for something and you look back now and go, man, if it had turned out like that, I don't know what I would have done. How many of y'all would that be true for? Yeah. There are people that I prayed that I would marry that didn't turn out like I thought it would, right? And I see them on Facebook now. I'm like, Lord, thank you. And they see me on Facebook. Well, Lord, you gave me the right, right provision. All right, thank you too, all right? And so you know, it, and that's the way it is. But we pray because we want to get through today. But he said, you need me. Look at what he said. What would it that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace? I want you to write down this definition of peace. Let's, let's do this. Peace is knowing who is in control, isn't it? I'm at peace when I know who's in control. I'm not at peace when things feel out of control. Jesus said this in John 14, talking to his disciples. He said three things. I am the what? What did he say? The way. You can follow me. You can follow me. I'm good. You follow me, I will take you to heaven. I, I am the way. There have been people that have come since then that have said, it's this way, or you can go this way, or all way, roads lead to God. All roads don't lead to God. He leads to God. I am the way. And then he said, I am the what? Truth. You can trust me. You may be sitting in one of our rooms in Compass or in the chapel or watching online this morning, and, and you're saying, well, Mike, I don't know. I would challenge you to go on a mission to find out if he's true. Because I know where that's going to lead you. It's going to lead you to a relationship with him. God can handle your questions as long as you'll go on the journey. If you're not going to go on the journey, he can't help you. And then he said, I am the what? Y'all have gotten quieter as we've gone. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the what? Life, meaning, this is what Billy Graham said, if you ever hear a rumor that I've died, it's not true. I've just begun a life in a new place. I'm the life. Do you know he's the only person that's ever lived that made a claim that he was going to die and rise again and fulfilled that claim? Well, Mike, I, I, I really think the, the Romans stole the body. What good would it do the Romans to steal the body? They were trying to stop a revolt and an uprising. If you steal the body, it caused the news of Jesus to spread. It wouldn't have done it. Well, the Jews did it. The, the last thing the Jews want to do is propagate a rumor that the one that said he was going to rise again was actually going to rise again. Well, the disciples, the disciples took him. Would you give up your life for something you knew not to be true? He's the only one that made the claim he would rise again, and today you can't find his body. Why? Because he did what he said he was going to do. He is the life. That is why he came. He came to seek and to save those that were lost, and it was going to cost him his life. And look at principle number three, and he is the only one that can rescue those who want to be rescued. Here's the hardest part. The hardest part is sometimes we don't know what we don't know. Right? Life is good. Life is easy. Until we hit a wall. Here's what I've learned in 22 years at North Star. People don't show up at North Star when they got the bonus in their paycheck. They don't show up at North Star because they had a great dinner with their spouse last night and life is great. 
They don't show up at North Star because their kid won a superlative at the school and they just wanted to go to church to say, thank you, Lord. They show up at church when life hits a wall and they pick up broken pieces of marriage and family and health and stuff. And all of a sudden they go, I don't know where to put these back together. Maybe I need to go to church. Sometimes it takes stuff for us to know the rescue's happened. It's funny, so in my job, I do lots of weddings, which are great days, <laughs> at least that day, all right? And so I do lots of weddings, and I do lots of funerals. I made a comment to a good friend earlier in the year. I said, I hadn't done a funeral in a while. I should have never said that because I've had a funeral almost every weekend since middle of February, literally every weekend, all ages, 20s to 70s. It's crazy. When doing those, I've never been at church and somebody walked up to me and said, man, I wanted to come. We came to North Star for the first time because you did a great wedding. That's not why they come. But I've had a lot of people show up after a funeral that went, I think I need to get some stuff in order in my life. Because we find out life doesn't last forever. Here's the hardest part. There are some that don't know they need to be rescued. They're sitting in here. There's some that don't know that they need to be rescued, and they're sitting out there, and they're your neighbor, they're your teammate, they're your classmate, they're your friend. Mike, what do I do? And here's a word I want you to write down. Pray. Pray. Pray for them. Pray for them. They don't know what they don't know. And if somebody doesn't tell them, they don't know. And you might be the somebody. You might be that person that God intersected their life with to be that somebody. And maybe Easter 2019 isn't going to be the story of a new outfit you get. The story of Easter 2019 might be the story of a friend that was just a friend who you helped find the way home by inviting them I don't know this but I do know this he came to rescue those that were lost and he came to rescue you too would you pray with me Father today we uh, we sit in a room like like compass in the chapel and maybe watch it online and we go man have I ever done that have I ever let him rescue me have I ever let that be my story maybe you're here today and you say Mike I'm the one with shattered dreams I'm the one with a broken heart I'm the one that's tried every other way and tried every other thing and I found my way back here. Oh, I'd love to lead you in a prayer to meet him. It goes like this, dear Lord Jesus, would you pray that with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I need you. I believe that you live for me. I believe that you died for me and I believe that you rose again just for Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be my Savior. I need you. Today, you prayed that prayer. I want you to look up from right where you are. There's a number up on that screen. I want you to text that information to that number, would you? With your name. You are why we open up on Sunday. You are why we didn't cancel this morning. And he would tell you, you were worth everything that he went through. You were worth it. Maybe you're sitting there today and you go, Mike, I know, but I haven't been on a rescue mission. Man, you were talking earlier about those that don't even know that they're lost and need rescue. 
man, God just brought people to my mind. Would you begin to pray for them? Would you begin to pray that God would give you that opportunity to invite them this week? One of those cards that Daniel or Seth told us about earlier. Would you begin to pray that God would move their heart to connect with his heart and that you would be the vehicle to do it. God, thank you for the rescue mission you went on. And thank you that you think we were worth it.
man, it has been such a great day. We're so glad you're here with us. Listen, here at North Star, we have some amazing volunteers, and now and then we have to tell them goodbye. And today is Nick's last Sunday leading with us. I know, boo him on that, actually, right? No, but listen, if you'll pray for him in this next new season, God's leading him in. Will you just say amen? Amen. We love what he has done here with us and uh, so thankful for him. Thank you again for being here. Don't forget to grab an invite card on your way out. We'll see you next Sunday, everybody. Man, I hope you enjoyed today. Pretty amazing, isn't it? the lengths Jesus went to, to come and find us. You may have never put yourself in the story. You can't read the Easter story without knowing that your name was in it. Today, we ask a question every week, and the question is, what did God say to you? Whatever it was, I hope you'll do something with it. Man, thanks for joining us today. We cannot wait to join you again next Sunday for Easter Sunday. I hope that if you're joining with us, you're not joining by yourself. And I hope that you got some friends there with you because we are gonna celebrate. We are gonna celebrate in a great way all that Jesus came to do for us. But until then, my prayer is you help someone find their way home. <laughs>